Hi, Ray Baker Jim, with the Wounded Artist Project again, and today we're speaking with Mike Cooper, a partner of Harley Ellis Devereaux, a Southfield, Michigan architectural firm, and Mike is going to be talking with us, answering a bunch of questions for us about building information, modeling software. Mike, thank you very much for joining us. No, it's my pleasure to be here, Ray. We thank you. We appreciate your wanting to help us. Uh, before we get started asking Mike a whole bunch of questions, I'd like to give you a little bit of background as to what, how this all came about. Uh, we have uh, our nonprofit serving war wounded, uh, sending art kits and that kind of thing. And I was at a military vehicle conference in Detroit in August of 2009. I was passing a business card trying to drum up some support for our organization. And I talked to an, a retired Army colonel named Ed Tucker, and he told me about a business that somebody had back out in Texas or Oklahoma. And apparently, uh, it was run by a young man who had a computer in his house, and he was doing updates to building drawings for a contractor. And I thought that would be a great opportunity for someone who's a combat wounded veteran who maybe got med boarded out of the military, looking for some extra work, and could work from home. Uh, maybe there are mobility issues, other health issues, can't really get to a business uh, place to work all the time. You know, it might be nice to be able to go once a week or twice a week. And I researched as much as I could on the web, couldn't find anything until one day in about December, I was over at a local library. And I happened to see a magazine, and Mike, what was it again? It was Technology Century Magazine by the Engineering Society of Detroit. Right. And in it was an article about building information modeling by Mike Cooper. And being local, I contacted Mike. I asked him if he could give us some time and talk about this on camera. And he said, sure. And we're here today to talk to him about this. And Mike, uh, the first question we're going to ask is, what is building information modeling? Yeah, building information modeling is really just a way of creating a computer model of a building long before it's designed or built, allow you to see what the building might look like. Um, the model's in three dimensions, so you can really experience what it might look like, but the thing that makes building information modeling special is it has intelligence baked into the model, so it's more than just lines. Four walls are not just lines of walls, they actually would represent a room and they might have some information embedded in there, like the lighting levels, the number of people in the room, equipment that might be in the room, information that would be valuable to a design team, a construction team, and then to the building owner down the line long after the, the building is designed and built. Hmm. Okay, and I'm aware of one company, Autodesk. Uh, what are some of the other packages out there uh, that our vets might be interested in? Sure, about? sure. You know, Autodesk. Um, provides the AutoCAD software with Revit, which allows you to produce 3D models with the building information embedded in. Um, Bentley is another company widely used. Um, they provide MicroStation software with Triforma, which allows you to do similar things, three-dimensional models with embedded intelligence. Both those uh, systems, widely used in industry, very good. Right, and, and as we've talked over the past few months, we found out that Autodesk has actually got a program they started out with this program for unemployed people, and what it, what it is uh, is you log into their system and you are allowed to download training packages to learn the software at your leisure, probably at home or you know maybe you go to a nice quiet place like a, a center of some sort. But uh, they allow you to use these packages for training, and uh, as you said, you know there's Revit and uh, several others, so you might want to contact. Uh, Autodesk and check into their uh, software assistance program. So uh, we got an idea of what it's all about. Uh, where does BIM actually start and can you give us an endpoint as to where this actually works? Oh, oh yeah. Um, you know, the exciting thing is BIM starts on the very first day. Um, if you imagine, even before a project or a building project is, is conceived or thought of, it's an opportunity to give somebody an idea of what a building might look like, to experience walking through a building almost like you're in a movie before anything is actually done. And this can be done during a marketing and business development phase um, to give people an idea of the world of possibilities that are in front of them before they actually commit to designing and building a building. So you're starting with a, a BIM model, a computer model, right from day one. The endpoint is something that has been consistently moving out further. Because I can tell you the design teams, they're using these models through the design process. 
the, the, the contractors, the people building the building, are picking up those models and they're using them through the construction process. And what we're seeing more of now is that the building owners are picking those models up at the end of construction and they're using those models to help them operate, maintain, and keep the buildings running efficiently for as long as they own the buildings. That's sometimes 20, 30 years beyond the completion of the design and construction process. Could be even longer. Absolutely. Oh, okay. And um, you mentioned uh, before uh, that hospitals might even use this in terms of keeping track of equipment. Can you give some examples? Uh, oh, sure. Well, you know, one of the issues sometimes that a, that a hospital faces, there's lots of portable mobile equipment. It travels all over the hospital and sometimes um, people forget where it is or it gets misplaced. Using barcode technology embedded in a, in a building information model, you can actually track the location of a specific piece of equipment, even a person or persons, right on the building information model, you can track exactly where they are um, within a building, almost like a GPS system might operate. Um, you'll be able to track up right on your building information model, so you can help yourself with inventory, locating people, locating resources that might be needed. In a hospital, all of this equipment is very critical. The, the ability to get from this location to that location in, a, in the quickest amount of time, that's a health and safety issue for the patient. So that certainly is a big deal. And BIM is one of the tools um, that they're able to use to make this more efficient, more effective for them. So it would be like, as you mentioned earlier, a crash card that might be in the emergency room. Somebody actually took it up to the second floor by mistake and left it there. We, would, we would know immediately where that was if we were using barcode technology embedded in a, in a building information model. Absolutely. So that, gets, that just feeds right back to the owners of the building. Hey, it's up there on two, bring it back. That's right, and, and it's, it's one of a number of examples where we're seeing BIM being used beyond the design and construction process, but into the normal day-to-day -day operation and maintenance of a building. Owners are trying to do more with less. They have less people on staff than they've had before, and tools at their disposal that can help them do more, help them do it quickly, those are very valuable to them, and BIM is just one of, the, of those tools. Okay, and then, again, back at the beginning of all this process, you would actually have clients come in and you would give them, show them examples based on them of this is what your building might look like. Oh, sure. Um, you know, most people, people not really um, involved in the building industry, um, it isn't natural for them to understand what buildings might look like or how they go together. Um, it's one thing to show somebody a blueprint or, or, or a, a, a flat sheet of paper with a lot of lines on it, and sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. A building information model, it looks like a movie. You can actually walk through your building um, using video technology and really experience a building. And for somebody who's thinking of building a building or operating a building who may not be adept at reading plans or understanding that, this is something we can all understand, we can all experience. Um, and to show somebody this is what it might be like um, to, walk, you know, to walk through your building, this is what it could look like, this is what it could feel like, again, is a very valuable tool for somebody who, who maybe is new to the industry or isn't engaged in it on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, now, when we're talking about a, a wounded vet trying to start a service-disabled veteran-owned business, an SDVOB, um, we're trying to get them to consider building this kind of business. Who do you think some of their potential clients or what services could they offer themselves? Yeah, I think right off the bat, you have a, a design industry and a construction industry that, as we said, are using building information models every day in the course of their work. And I would tell you that whether these firms are doing um, their, 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 their BIM modeling in-house or whether they're outsourcing, um, and sometimes that outsourcing is local, sometimes it's, um, it's overseas, India and China, regardless of what model they're using, they need help. These firms need assistance. So a firm that does BIM modeling in-house uh, may have overflow work and then there's an opportunity there to supplement their own staff and to help them out. And certainly a firm that's outsourcing that work I think would, would much rather be looking at local partners, uh, which would be a more efficient process for them than somebody that's, that's much further away. And then just as we've talked about, beyond the design industry and the construction industry, which are viable partners, we have all of the building owners out there, the hospitals, the universities, 
private corporations that, as we said, are starting to use the BIM models themselves um, as part of the day-to-day -day management of their buildings, they're going to need help keeping those models um, up to date, developing new models. That's a potential brand new client base for this type of an industry or business.